everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today we are going to be talking about how I maintain humidity for all of my tarantulas. So of course it varies by species, what is supposed to be kept more humid or likes to be kept more humid versus what likes to be kept dry or prefers a dry enclosure. But I do have to admit, I pretty much take care of my tarantulas pretty uniformly, as in I keep them all almost the same, but not quite. So I wanna show you guys how I water my tarantulas and talk a little bit about why I water them like that. I've actually selected certain tarantulas to show you guys how I water them and talk a little bit more in depth about how I water them and why I water them the way that I do. So this is the mister that I use. It is honestly, I feel like uh, defective. This has always given me issues, but I still use it to spray some things down, which I'm gonna show you guys in a minute. So I actually just randomly picked some of my slings. I also tried to choose them in different enclosures just to kind of show like how I water each enclosure. So this is that Mexican tarantula I got recently. That's a kind of newer species to the hobby. And although I think the species is kept a little bit on the drier side. For ceilings, I do like to keep them a little bit more damp. So I just take my mister and I do, well, it's really simple, a little bit of uh, drops right on in there. And yeah, that is, that is all it needs. Here are my Ecampus stratus and I see one right here, little, little babe. Yeah, so I'm actually very careful about how much I water these. Oh, this one looks like it's really in pre-molt too. So yeah, I actually just go ahead and I will like pick like a corner or a side and I will just kind of drip it in there just to get it nice and damp on one side. So as you see, there's some water sitting on top and that kind of gives them the opportunity to go drink from that water if they are thirsty, but it will eventually sink into the substrate. And as you see, it's like not dry, but not wet. Like if you picked it up and you squeezed it, water wouldn't come out of it, but it's still got moisture in it. And that's what you want for a sling, especially this, my little Ecanthus stratus. So I will just do the same thing for all four of them. You see a little tiny molt right here. I don't know where it is though. Oh, haha, <laughs> it's right there. But yeah, like I said, just pick a side, get it nice and damp. Some of that water sits on top, it'll sink in. This one molted recently, look at it. These babies are growing so good. They've molted with me quite a few times now. Just give it a few drops of water so that it can go drink from it if it wants. And we have one more Ecampus stratus. Where are you? Hmm. Oh, <laughs> right under the leaf. I love how they've all crafted their homes. There we go. And now they are all taken good care of. They're all set for now. They've got moisture and they have some water droplets to drink off of on the side. So this one actually needs to be rehoused soon. This is my youthless species Parda. Same concept a little bit of water in a corner. And there we go, we are good for now. Same for my smithy. Now you don't have to remove the lid. There you go. So this beauty is my Caribbean Versi color and she is pretty much ready for a new enclosure soon too. She's gotten huge. I've had her since she was like so tiny. She's so pretty though and she's getting so big. And although I don't typically use water dishes for my slings, I do for her because she is a little bit more of a damp species. I don't know why she always shreds up her molts and dumps them down here for me, but that's like a thing that she does. So I'm gonna go rinse this out really quick so that the molt doesn't mold and I will be RB. 10 seconds later. Okay, so here's her little water dish. Plop in the water dish. Put a little bit in there for her, just like just like that. So yeah, that's how I do the slings. Let's move on to juveniles. So I actually grabbed a couple juveniles to show you guys. Here is my OBT who is probably not going to uh, be visible for long. She's very shy. You see her, she's just trying to flee just cause that's what she does. I see a molt in here. We're actually gonna grab that really quick. I already know she's female just because she looks like super female, but oh, and perfect. So she actually molted and guess what? So did she, she just molted as well. I actually don't know if this one's female or not, but this is my Acanthus caria geniculata and we can actually pull her molt too. But yeah, before we do that, I wanted to go ahead and show you guys how I'm going to water them. So I actually, will be giving them both a quick mist just because they both molted and I don't want to make them have to walk across the enclosure 
to get hydrated. And then now that I have misted them, I'm actually going to screw this top off. So now that I have removed the cap, I am just going to fill up the water dish and I'm actually going to overflow the water dish. So if you're wondering why I overflowed the water dish, as you see, there's all of this extra water that's spilled out. That is because I want this water to sink down here. The way that the earth is, is that the top layer is going, obviously going to get wet when it rains and stuff, but that top layer dries out. But the deeper you dig, the more wet it's going to get, the more cool it's going to get. And that's kind of the concept that you're going for when you're trying to maintain humidity. And here's my OBT who retreated into her burrow right there. But let's go ahead and try to remove this. <laughs> so it's been a few minutes and I'm going to check to see if we can identify the gender of these molds. But before we do that, I kind of wanted to mention why humidity is so important. So although this is my Acanthoscuria geniculata, and she's a little bit more of a wet species. This is my OBT, and she's a little bit more of a dry species. But as you see, both their molts came out good. They both came out of the molt okay. And that's why humidity is so important. It's because they need humidity to molt good, kind of like how a snake needs it to shed. It's that internal humidity that makes the difference between a good molt and a bad molt. And what is a bad molt? A bad molt is when they either die during the molt, or they die after the molt, or they lose limbs during the molt. Now all of these things can happen. So let's pull this one first and then here's my OBT. All right, I see it. I'm not sure how well you can see it on video. It's a little bit hard to see, but there is some spermathicae right here. It's a little torn, but there it is, female. I don't know if this Acanthoscaria geniculata is going to be able to be, if I'm gonna be able to tell yet, but we can go ahead and try. Pretty chewed up though. Yeah, this abdomen part is just like too ripped. So we're gonna have to wait for the Acanthoscaria geniculata. I've had the Acanthoscaria geniculata a long time too though. So if it turns out female, I wouldn't be surprised because it's taking like so long to like grow at all. Later. Okay, so here's my Grandma Stola Porteri. So this is actually a species that I don't water very often because she likes to be dry. So as you see, her substrate is pretty dry. If you look on the side here, it's all dry and her water dish is also dry. So yeah, I'm actually going to quickly water her again. Overflow the water dish a little bit. Now that's just gonna make this corner moist. But as you see, that water's already kind of sinking in towards the bottom and it will absorb. Where are you going? Hi, I don't want you to fall. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, nope, 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 okay. It's so funny how they don't like the feel of hands. But yeah, as you see, it's already absorbing there in the corner, so she has a little moist corner. Here's her water dish, and it's full, and yeah, I'll see you again in two weeks, Mavis. So let's talk about bubbles. My Afonopelma Samani. Boy, do people have opinions on her. So if you guys remember, Bubbles is my Afonopelma Samani who has had two bad molts with me. She was purchased uh, on discount because she had a little injury on her foot. And from that, I think she it resulted in two bad molts. That said, both times that she molted bad, I had so many people yell at me that her enclosure was too dry because they saw her enclosure from here. This is what they saw. They saw an empty dry water dish and um, a really dry looking enclosure, which that's fair. It does look pretty dry from here. But if you see her burrow, which comes over here and goes all the way down to here, this is where she hangs out. And this is what I keep damp. So how do I achieve this dampness? It's pretty easy. So I actually water her quite often and my other Asamani pretty frequently. And all I do is overfill and look at that drips right down into her burrow and she'll drink right down here. She doesn't really come up to drink very often. If you have a tarantula that stays burrowed a lot, that's the best way to get them to drink. And so I will keep one side of her enclosure very damp. And as you see, it looks really damp now, right? Now all of that is sinking towards the bottom. 
You can see it sinking in and soaking in. She is good. She's got water to drink up here. She's got a nice damp half of the enclosure. If she wants to be dry, she can come to this half. And I keep it just about this. I do get it pretty wet, you know, but this is a really good amount of humidity for her. Here is Luna, my Brachypelma smithy. You can kind of see with her enclosure, I have jungle mix for her and this bottom part, do you see how it's still damp? And then this top part is dry. That's exactly what I want. I want the top to be dry and I want this bottom part to stay pretty damp. Now her water dish is pretty dry and yeah, she ate a cricket recently, which is really good. I didn't see it happen, but it did happen. But yeah, I'm just going to overflow her water dish. And now we can watch as all of that starts to sink right on down here into the substrate. See it just soak up really good. There you go. She is taken care of. She's looking good. So I especially wanted to talk about this species. This is a male Aphonopelma hensi, and this is a young female Aphonopelma hensi. And she actually has been like underground for the past maybe six months. And what's unique about this species to me is that this is the native species here in Missouri. So something that I really think is important to stress about this species and any tarantula species in particular when keeping them in captivity is that in the wild they actually have weather patterns. So she was actually born in captivity. She's about four or five, maybe six years old now. She's still pretty small and he was actually wild caught. He came into somebody's dining room and you know, you guys know dumpster tarantula. If you don't know dumpster tarantula story, I will link it down below. But yes, this is dumpster tarantula. Something that is really cool though is that she, even though she's captive bred, she still pretty much stayed underground and hibernated all winter. Like she just reemerged. I literally haven't seen her. She wasn't molting. She wasn't doing anything except just staying underground. And that's probably a natural thing, a natural clock maybe inside that told her to do that. So right now in Missouri, it is really damp. It's really gloomy today if you can't tell by the lighting and it's just really wet. It's raining nonstop. It's very humid. A very common thing that happens is a lot of flooding. It floods here pretty much every year, really bad in some areas. And these little guys are from here. So these guys are pretty used to being flooded out of their burrows in the spring and summer in their natural habitats. So that is why I gave, give them extra water and I let them have that extra water because that's natural here. And as you see, I keep one side really damp on both and then one side dry. So they have that option. And this is our, like, as you see, it's already like soaked in and kind of gone towards the bottom. Although these are a phonopilma, they do like to be kept a little bit more damper, I find anyway. And I think that's because in the spring, they're damp all the time here. Like I, it rains nonstop, it floods a lot. So we know that in the wild, they're living in really wet conditions sometimes. So this excess water is not going to hurt them. It's totally natural and normal for them. Having said that, I want wanted to talk about the species also because we are going to be looking for them in the wild here soon. Anyway, I hope that clears it up. I hope this helps you guys. And yeah, humidity, I feel like it's overthought of a lot. I feel like um, a lot of people keep their tarantulas successfully on dry substrate with just a water dish, but that's just not what I do. And yeah, stay tuned because we will be looking for these in the wild here very soon. Okay, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Like this video if you did, subscribe if you're not, and you want me. Don't forget that I have an Instagram that I use probably way too much. It's at tarantula.cat. You can go follow me there. I also have a Patreon and a Teespring. It is all linked below. There's a podcast that's also linked below. And yeah, I will see you guys soon. I have some things in store for you, which I am just like, but yes, okay, I hope you're all staying well wherever you are on this planet. Thank you for being here and for your support. I will see you guys soon.